Good morning or evening. Today we're gonna generate a terrain using Perlin noise. Let's go. Inters are useless, don't you think? Everything big starts with something small. In our case, it starts with a dot. Yeah. Now a single dot is not gonna do much, but if we add more dots, we can make a line. So I made a function called drawLine which surprisingly draws a line. And it works perfectly fine, but it's too skinny. Let's make it thicker. Boom. Now we're talking. I also made it change its starting point whenever I press the mouse button. Now we can use this function to draw a terrain. Here we declare the vector called terrain which will store numbers between 0 and 1. And here we draw the terrain using our drawLine function. Let's see how it works. It's flat. Like your girlfriend. Ok, we need some randomness. We're not gonna use the rand because it only returns whole numbers and that's messed up. Instead, we're gonna use the random library. Now this library is a bit complicated, but it does its job. Here we declare a random edge and also generate numbers. Here we declare a distribution type and range, and here we generate numbers. If we run this program, we'll get something like this. If we run it again, we'll get the same thing. That's because this thing is using the same seed. This number to be exact. Let's change it to 7. And now we have different randomness. Changing the seed like that is a bit tedious, so let's make it easier. Here we go. Oh yeah, this feels good. The reason I'm doing this instead of assigning a random seed every time is because I want to see the same terrains, but I also want to see different terrains. That makes sense, doesn't it? Now we can focus on the terrain generation. We're gonna use the parallel noise for that. Now how does the parallel noise work? First we specify how many points our terrain will have. Let's say 16. Then we generate a random noise which will have 16 points. We also add one point at the end that will have the same height as the first one. That way, it all wraps around. After we've generated our noise, we take every 16th point and make a new noise based on that. That's why we need that 17th point. Then we take every 8th point, every 4th, every 2nd and every point from our noise. We end up with 5 noises with different octaves. After that, we send weights to each noise based on its pitch value. Then we multiply them by their corresponding weights and add them up together. And just like that, we get our final terrain. Now this is not how the real parallel noise works. This is just a modified version of it. The real one uses things like gradient vectors and dot products and blah blah blah, it's too smart for me. Ok, here's what I wrote. It's perfect. I know. And here's our final terrain, which doesn't look that exciting. But at least now you know how we're gonna generate our terrain. Congratulations. Alright, it's time for some progress. One dimensional terrains are good, but two dimensional terrains are way better. So let's make them instead. Now in order to generate two dimensional terrains, we need to generate two dimensional noises. Let's do it. Ok, let's see if it works. Well, that looks like a terrain, I guess. Currently I'm using the nearest neighbor interpolation and that's wrong. We need to use something better, like bilinear interpolation. After reading how bilinear interpolation works and realizing that I should've paid attention in a math class, I decided to make my own algorithm. Here's how it works. We take the input image and upscale it by 2. Then we take these two pixels and find the average between them. We place the resulting pixel right here. After that, we repeat this process for these two and these two pixels. If we use this algorithm for this sharp, ugly image, we get this. Beautiful. Smooth. Perfect image. Are you crashing on an image? No. Well, I better not ruin your first date. I'm not crashing on an image. Now that we've generated our terrain, it's time to add some colors to it. The code isn't tricky at all, just a bunch of ifs and else's. Let's see the result. Now this looks amazing, but you may notice that the mountains are generated too frequently and too big. Why? That's because the Perlin noise is generating terrains like this, but what we really want is for it to generate terrains like this. So how do we do it? We just raise every cell's value to the fourth power. Now this may look good, but if we generate more terrains, we can see some bad patterns. The reason for this is that my upscaling algorithm takes this image and returns this. Now this looks awful. We have to use something better. I decided to use the bcubic interpolation. Now I'm not gonna explain to you how it works, because I don't know how it works myself. I just did what this page told me to do, and somehow it worked. Yay. Now instead of this, we're getting this. Let's use it for our terrain. Now this looks a lot better. Remember one wise and a very attractive man said, it all wraps around. Let's see if it's true. Wow, 
It is true. Okay, this map is too pixelated. Let's increase the map size. Hit the music. Alright, hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to- Wait, 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 that's it? But what about that 3D terrain you showed in the thumbnail? Oh, that was just a clickbait. You know, to lure some viewers. Okay, fine. Now I'm not gonna load up in GL just for the sake of this video. Instead, I'm gonna use asymmetric projection, mostly used in pixel art games. Here's a single tile. If we put them side by side, we'll get a flat surface. If we put them on top of each other, we'll get a cuboid. If we combine these two, we can make an illusion of a 3D terrain. Let's do it. Here's the code. Nothing fancy, but it works. And here's a random noise in 3D. I can see you're not impressed. So here you go. A little animation I did. It's cool, right? You should really get a job. You're just jealous. Says the guy who can't even afford a chair. What the? What the hell are you doing? Get away from me. Sorry, miss. Alright, let's see how our terrain will look like in 3D. 3, 2, 1. Boom. Okay, this looks dull. Let's make it more colorful. We just need to change this line of code into this piece of code. Well, that looks kinda cool. Okay, let's decrease the tile size and increase the map size. Now this looks a lot better, but we can go even further and get this terrain. As you may notice, it goes outside of the window. You may also notice that we have a large empty area. Let's fix that. Well, that wasn't so hard. Okay, it's time to show you the final results. Hit the music. I think we can end this video here. Thanks for watching. Like to show me your support. Subscribe if you want to see more. Penguin.